Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Let's watch. I think the way I show up when I'm dating, I think I have to stop leading with my your career. St- yeah, your stuff. I think sometimes guys would probably want me to be more needy, and I'm not. I think that's a thing. I want you to be you. It's all about authenticity. It's being your most authentic mm-hmm. self. I left home when I was 17 years old. Yeah. So I've been taking care of myself for a long time. Okay, I don't know, but I'm seeing some signs of avoidant attachment style. I have no idea based on the very little that was presented, but I'm hearing some red flags of that. So it sounds like Garcelle had to be very independent early in life. Usually that indicates some difficulties in your childhood that you learn, you know what, I can't depend on other people, I need to depend on myself. Now there's nothing wrong with being independent, of course, but if you if the pendulum swings, swings too far, then you actually will deny your attachment needs to other people in, uh, in an effort to protect yourself from being vulnerable and being hurt by other people. And so she said a few things there that indicate possible avoiding attachment style. One is that she's been independent for a long time. Two, that when she would start dating, she would lead with her career. And three, when uh, one of the complaints that she would get from, my dog is looking at me in the window. <laughs> it's very distracting. <laughs> and, and three, she was saying that when she was dating men or in a relationship with men, they would tell her that they would like her to need them more, that they f- probably felt like there was a lot of distance there and that uh, she wasn't reaching out to them for help or for dependency. Because usually in a well-functioning relationship, there is mutual dependency on each other. Both people need each other. Both people depend on each other. Not too much, but you know, a good amount. And so it sounds like she picked up on that from her partners that they wanted her to be more needy. Another flag, red flag of avoidant attachment is that people who are pathologically independent or avoidant attached, they will perceive emotions and vulnerability as a negative thing as being needy. They will say, oh my God, everyone is so needy all the time and I'm not a needy person, I don't, I don't care, I'm totally fine on my own. And again, there's nothing wrong with being independent, but there is something wrong with shaming yourself and maybe even shaming others for having just regular dependency on other people. So let's let's pay attention to that and maybe we'll hear more along those lines. Mm-hmm. The opportunities that I'm getting, I have to take because that's the privilege. That's the privilege that my mom brought me to this country for. And so I have to take it, I have to do well. So it's always been, I take care of me, I take care of my myself. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so all the issues that I talked about, again, I don't know if Garcelle is a candidate for this, are there for good reasons. People who become pathologically independent and shaming of their own vulnerability and shaming of other people's vulnerability, the reason why they do that is for very, very good reasons. When they were going up, neediness was was shamed or was punished or was just completely denied. You know, they're three years old and they reach out emotionally to other people and they are neglected emotionally or abandoned or something like that. Again, I don't know what Garcelle's life was like. It sounds like Garcelle's mom was going through some difficult times and when parents are going through difficult times, sometimes they will prioritize food and shelter and survival and they won't have all the resources to be emotionally attuned to a child, to allow the child to be needy, to allow the child to even be a child. You know, when the parents are going through a lot, sometimes the kid, the kids have to grow up really fast because there's just not enough resources from the parent to let the child be a child. Letting someone completely have my back is me relinquishing my power. I'm always like, I got it. I can do it. And I think it's because I don't trust somebody will truly have my back. Right. So I don't know about Garcelle, but it sounds more and more like avoiding attachment where I, I learned, you know, she's saying, I basically learned that I can't depend on other people, that people do not have my back. And it is a huge stretch for me to be vulnerable and allow someone to have my back because I don't really trust them to based on my past experiences. So this is interesting. I didn't know they'd get into this on this show. But what would it feel like, Garcelle, if you could let go for a second and let somebody else tell you, I got you? I want to get to there. This is all part of the process. On the other side of it is the relationship that you want. 
and that's what you deserve. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. This is a dating coach, and she is saying things that I might say as a therapist. You deserve to have someone have your back. You deserve to have a relationship where you can depend on that person, and that person will show up. But the key is with avoidant attachment is that you can just you can tell yourself that you can say, okay, fine, I'll, I'll let someone in, and I'll I'll depend on them. But the the key is is that when there is a threat. The avoidant person will run emotionally, physically. The avoidant person will run, and that results in distance. And then the other person is hurt and will pull away. And then the avoidant person is like, "See, they don't have my back." But it can be at least partially as you know due to the fact that the avoidant person is whenever there's a threat, they turn away, which hurts the other person. But the avoidant person doesn't really know that. They're and they're just trying to manage their own pain and their own worries. And when they, you know, pull away emotionally, they are trying to preserve themselves, and they don't realize it has an impact on other people. That actually causes people to do the things that they don't want them to do. The reason I just wanted to pull you aside is because it was brought up to me that people are still talking about us. Right. Oh, I was going to bring it up. I have to imagine it's annoying you, and it's annoying me. See, here's the thing. I think it's very dangerous. When we talk about each other behind each other's backs, I agree. Like I had promised you, and you promised me we wouldn't talk about this. Yes, a hundred percent. Yes, triangulation is a thing that you'll have to hear me talk about, and that's what is often happening on these shows that causes a lot of destruction in the relationships. Instead of directly working it out with each other, there's talks with other people. Other people are drawn in to the tension. And if everyone is fused and undifferentiated or relatively undifferentiated, it can cause the anxiety to swirl around and increase, and you're never given an opportunity to actually resolve the issue between the two of them. So good on them for saying, let's not talk about this with other people. Let's go right to each other and work this out. Out of this group, and I'm not making fun of any of y'all. Don't talk about those girls. You know, I feel like I would stand up for any one of these women. I trust them, and I know they all want to be supportive. But I just have so many challenges in front of me, and there's so much that these women don't know. All right, well that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.